But often when I'm teaching on prayer, I kind of use this quote that I heard many years ago. All prayer is powerful, but some prayer is more powerful. And as I can afford about that kind of phrase, and I kind of agree with that, that all prayer is powerful, all prayer is effective. Some prayer is more powerful and effective, that kind of prayer that comes from a place of faith and expectation. And what that looks like, what that means is many different things, but one of them is beginning to pray with kind of God's perspective on things. It's a bit like this jigsaw puzzle. I often only get to see a little bit, and actually sometimes I just get to see the back of it, and I don't really fully understand what is happening what God sees. Why is that important? Because sometimes when I come to pray, if I could just come with my perspective and I don't take time to listen to God, then it's going to affect the way that I pray. To give you an example, this might not be something that you have ever experienced, but sometimes when I come to pray, it kind of looks a little bit like this. It's like I'm going to God and going, hey, God, have you seen the news or have you read this? Are you aware of this? And can you do something about it? It's kind of like I'm going to God and trying to inform him about something that actually, to be honest, I know he knows about. But as soon as if you were listening into my prayers, it might sound like that. And so kind of learning to listen to God and get his perspective on things. I think it's crucial when it comes to learning to pray with faith and expectation. And somebody who's really helped me with this is a friend called Andrew. And he first shared this, what I call the Andrew's Triangle with me. So let me just share it with you and let me just go uh, through it. So as you look at this triangle, you kind of see three different things. You got God, you got us, and you got the issue or the situation that you are praying. So previously, as I said, it feels like I'm telling God, hey, God, this is what's happening here. Do you think about it? But this is different. You start off with, there's a logic to the numbers. So you start off with number one, which is this kind of looking up, a bit like I often talk about before, look up before you look out. So I'm just looking up at God. I'm kind of just worshiping him. I'm adoring him. I'm sitting at his feet. But as part of that, like any good relationship, and prayer is just an outworking of this relationship with God, it's not just me talking all the time. If I just talked to my wife all the time, I tell you what, I would be in serious problems. I have to take time to intentionally listen to God. So in that place of coming to pray and focusing in on God, that one, God begins to speak to me. And that is what number two is. He begins to tell me not just maybe things that I should pray about, and it might be some of the things that are on my mind, but he also begins to tell me how to pray for those things. And then three is my response to that. God having told me what to pray for and how to pray for it, then I just ask God, will you do that? And four is God moving in response to that prayer. It makes sense on a whole load of different levels. As a dad, I love it when my children come to me and ask me for something that I really want to give them or do for them. And it's the same when it comes to God. What does this look like? Let me give you a really practical example. As many of you know, I used to work in Egypt for a number of years. And I happened to be out of the country kind of when the revolution uh, kicked off many years ago. But I was in the UK and many people wanted to pray about what was happening there. They could see it was all over the news. And there was a real fear at that time that a particular group called the Muslim Brotherhood were going to come into power. And most Christians felt that they should pray against this. And they came to me and they said, what do you think? And I was like, I don't know. Let us just pray and ask God how he wants us to pray. You see, I remember what God did and is doing in Iran. I remember that in the late 70s, most people thought 
that the Alatolo Homini coming into power would be the worst thing ever to happen. And yet now as we look back in history, we see that was a turning point in what God was doing in Iran. If we hadn't taken time to listen to God and ask him what to pray and how to pray, it might have been completely different. And I think that was the case in Egypt. For me, the Muslim Brotherhood coming into power was one of the best things that could ever happen to the Christian church. Before I went overseas and when I was in Egypt initially, there was a real kind of fear and, yeah, people didn't want to reach out to their, to their neighbors. But after the revolution, the Muslim Brotherhood coming into power, it broke some kind of fear in the church, the majority of the church. So that when I returned to Egypt, they were wanting to reach out and to their neighbors. And so we need to listen to God. Since when I'm doing this training, I kind of ask, you know, who wants to pray a prayer that's guaranteed to be answered? And of course, everybody puts their hand up. Yes, we do. And so I say to them, and I'll read to them Romans 8.34, where it says that Jesus is at the right hand of God interceding. And then I asked them, do you think Jesus' prayers are answered? And everybody says, yes. And so I say to them, I wonder what Jesus is praying about this person. Was he praying about my family? Was he praying about me? Was he praying about this issue? Was he praying about that country? I want to be praying those prayers. And I'm not going to get that until I learn. It's part of my prayer time just to still myself. As I enter his presence. And hear his voice and what he's saying about different things. Another way of looking at it, just from a a quote I read many years ago, it says this. Ask God to give you a redemptive revelation to dream his dreams. And that revelation will inform how you pray and increase your faith for what God will do. He wants you to see how things could be in the life of people, places and regions. He wants you to imagine their redeemed future and then pray blessing for them in light. I just love that. In some ways, it kind of summarizes what I'm saying. It's like as we get that revelation, as we're in God's presence, as he reveals what and how we should pray, it will inform it. And because we know that we're coming from this place of the God who's given this revelation, it will increase our faith and expectation for what God do. Just to finish off with another quote by a guy called Sean Boltz, he said this. I'm just going to read it so I get it correct. Prayer's power comes when we see God's original design over nations, cities, people groups, industries children and so forth now he's thinking particularly about this country called congo you could replace that with anything he says this what would congo look like fully developed and who has the courage to ask god to show what he wants to do with that nation one of the most mineral rich nations of the world this is how the power of prayer comes you can't listen to the war report the opinions papers the religious report You have to hear God's heart report. I like what we were talking about before, listen to God. His original plan and design and his current plan of action. It will go against what you have seen and heard. It's easy to hear reports about what is not happening in the nations. You can flip it around and speak of what can happen. We want to listen to God's heart instead of the critical mass. And so if we want to be people that pray prayers that can just shape situations, that can shape nations, we need to take time to be in God's presence, to hear what he is saying about those, his redemptive, his original plan for those nations, for those situations. And then it's easy. All we do is just we repeat what he's told us already. And our Heavenly Father delights to answer those prayers.